What's cracking with your snack and snacker stars? It's Brandon from the SAS the Snack Food Appreciation Society coming at you with another edition of OTR, the first edition for 2016. It is Tuesday, January the 5th, 2016. And as you can see, I'm at Chili's, but it didn't start out that way. Where was I gonna go first? And what did I get here? Find out about all of that and more on today's OTR. You are looking live at the Fridays on King Street at the corner of Beauregard Street in the Summit Center in Alexandria, Virginia. You've seen me review things many times from this shopping center before, across from where the original location of Five Guys is and on busy, busy King Street. Anyway, I will not be reviewing something from this Friday today as I tried to order something and it was a complete catastrophe. Uh, I'll tell you more about it in a second on today's OTR. All right, so before we get on with the actual review that I'm going to do today, wherever that ends up being, let me tell you about the story of this Friday's here on King Street. Okay, so I was having a hard time deciding what I wanted to review today. There's not a whole lot going on that I haven't reviewed, and some of the things that are out there that I haven't reviewed aren't that exciting. So I decided I'd look at some of the fast cash type places like Friday's here, and I saw a burger that looked really uh, interesting, a new Sicilian double stack burger, part of their handcrafted burger line. So, I mean, this isn't very far from where I live. I come on down here, walk in the door, say, hey, I want to order something to go. Lady directs me to the window in the back near the double doors. Uh, when I get there, I see that the manager looking person, because he's wearing a tie, uh, is on the phone and talking very quietly, but I can tell it's something to do with the business. He keeps saying something about mashed potatoes about 18 times. Doesn't even acknowledge me uh, for upwards of 10 minutes. Finally turns around and kind of looks at me in kind of an exasperated sort of way and uh, goes, I, I can't, uh, uh, um, um, and then sees a, another employee come out from the double door. Goes, Matt, I think was his name or something like that, he goes, can you take care of this gentleman with a to-go order? So, this gentleman, a fellow with glasses, skinny guy, a little taller than me, goes, what would you like? It starts off okay. I said, okay, on this Sicilian burger, uh, they list something called spicy vegetables. Can you let me know what those spicy vegetables are? Because I'm allergic to some vegetables and some vegetables I just don't like. And he goes, uh, he goes, the pepperoni makes it spicy. I'm like, right, I understand that, but what are the vegetables? He goes, I don't even know. He's going to leave it at that. I said, well, can you find out for me? Very, very exasperated. He goes, yeah, and turns around, goes back through the double doors. Goes back there, comes back about three, four minutes later with his phone with a picture of some kind of ingredients. It looks like a picture almost of a cheesesteak or something like that with uh, peppers and onions and stuff on there. Apparently, and it seems to be green peppers, and I don't really like green peppers, you know? I just don't dig them, and if they're gonna be on my burger, they might ruin the entire experience for me, therefore, thereby creating a negative review. So then uh, I said, okay, cool. Can I get this burger without those? He goes, I don't even know if that's possible. And he walks back there again. Comes back out, walks completely past me, goes to another table, turns around and goes, um, yeah, it's not po even possible to make the Sicilian burger without those vegetables. And I said, okay, call me dumb, but I don't even understand this right here. Uh, you're saying that it's not like made back there, this is something that comes already pre-assembled or something like that? And he goes, yeah. So basically, what he's leading me to believe is that these burgers are not even assembled in the back. Like, they don't even put a bun down on a plate, cook a burger, put the burger on the plate, and put everything else on the burger. This son of a bitch is all in one package, I guess, and microwaved, is what he's trying to tell me, but this fellow, this gentleman, is so monosyllabic, he cannot express to me what the hell he means anyway. And uh, he didn't seem to be one uh, bit bothered that I wasn't going to order from here. He's probably one of the worst customer service people I've ever come across in my time reviewing food and even prior to that. So if you come down to this Friday's, which I don't recommend, make sure the fellow skinny guy, white fella with glasses, kind of spiky hair, a little bit taller than me, skinnier than me, 
don't sit at this table because you ain't gonna have a good time. Anyway, I'll be right back with whatever I'm gonna review on OTR. You are now looking live at Chili's on Leesburg Pike at the corner of Gorham Street here in Bailey's Crossroads, Virginia, not too far from the uh, Fridays I was just at, and I'm actually parked over here in the Toys R Us parking lot. That's right, I'm the creepy guy in the Toys R Us parking lot with the camcorder. But left with uh, no backup plan, I have visited Chili's for another burger. And that burger is within the white Chili's container. Chili's to go, that is. Open that bad boy up. And what they call this burger is the Sweet and Smoky Burger. And I had a hard time choosing between this and another burger. Uh, I forget what that one was even called, but it was practically exactly the same. And what we have rocking here is a bakery style bun, because everybody's doing these bakery style buns that look kind of brioche nowadays. Take that off of there. Got applewood smoked bacon, got panko breaded um, onion rings there, uh, pepper jack cheese, on top of, of course, a burger patty that appears to be somewhere between a quarter and third pound. Got uh, garlic dill pickles on there, as well as a chili's sauce, whatever that happens to be underneath there. I guess it's some variety of uh, Big Mac sauce or what have you. Also comes with on the side a mango barbecue sauce. So that I guess is where you get part of your sweet part of your smokiness. Also comes with Chili's fries, which I enjoy quite a bit. They put my setup on the side in the little cup there. I actually like when they do that. That's a really, really good bonus there. And all of this came for about $11.79 which is about a buck cheaper than what I would have paid at Friday's. Anyway, not exactly a brand new burger, not exactly a front burner on the uh, you know list of things to review these days, but hey, I figured I'd give it a shot, and I will do that right after this on OTR. All right, gang, I am back. I'm still a bit frustrated over the whole Friday's experience, man. I was treated fairly poorly, uh, you know, and they sort of let me into the world of their restaurant, you know, things aren't maybe quite as fresh as you think they are. I mean, handcrafted means handcrafted, right? I don't know, man. That, that really blew my mind. But anyway, uh, let me go ahead and uh, dress this burger real quick, and I'll take a bite of it. Three, two, one. Alright guys, I added the tomato and the whole leaf lettuce. I did not add the uh, pickles because there's already pickles on here. And also I did not add the uh, red onion ring that was in there. I don't like raw onions on my burger. But here you go. This is what you come up with. Show it to you next to my noggin like I always do. About the same size as my head, right? No, not quite exactly, but a pretty hefty looking burger. Not the most expensive burger I've had lately, but still in that over $10 range. And when you get there, you really want to make sure you get some value. And so far, it looks like you're getting value here. The ingredients look fresh. It's a fairly large burger. Let me go ahead and prevent some drippage here. And I'm going to take a bite of it and let you know what I think. All right, gang, uh, that is a really tasty burger, guys. We're setting the bar pretty high for the beginning of 2016, and you wouldn't expect that Chili's would be the place for burgers, but that is a really good burger, guys. Um, first of all, the meat, which, of course, is your uh, number one part of your burger, is juicy. It's tender. Um, it's well done. I would say medium well to well done, but, uh, you know, you, you can get away with that as long as the burger is still juicy and soft and not tough. So that's a good thing and they did pretty well with that. Um, also good flavor to the meat as well. Uh, the bacon was not very crispy. 
uh, at all, in fact, and it's a little bit of uh, a little bit fatty uh, in terms of the overall bacon uh, construction. So you know, not the best bacon I've ever had, but still pretty good. Um, Cause you know, most bacon's pretty good, right? The pepper jack cheese didn't really add much spice to it, but did add a creamy uh, backdrop for the meat to sort of rest upon. Uh, and then you get to um, the onion ring, which was kind of not very noticeable. It added a little bit of crunch to the deal, but flavor-wise, they, they aren't real, like, heavy steakhouse-flavored type onions or anything like that. Um, they're very mild tasting, so it didn't really uh, make much difference in the flavor of the burger. And plus, they didn't look anything like what they looked like on the menu. On the menu, these panko onion rings on this burger looked about as big as the burger and were relatively thick. These are tiny little onion rings. There's like two or three of them, you know, just thrown under there. In fact, when I first looked underneath the bun, I didn't even see the onion rings. And I drove back across the street and was getting ready to complain before I looked again. And notice that, yeah, they're on there, so boo on me, right? Um, I like that mango barbecue sauce. It's got a, a nice tang to it, a uh, little bit of, uh, you know, sort of a sweet thing going on. Uh, no spiciness, however, unfortunately. And I don't really get where they say smoky or sweet and smoky or whatever they want to call this one because I don't get any smoke to it whatsoever. Uh, so all of that put together with a decent bakery bun. A nice fresh tomato and a decent leaf of lettuce. I would say I'm going to go ahead and give this a 7 8 thumbs up. With the only detractions being the not so crispy bacon and the not uh, that present onion rings in terms of the flavor and so forth. So, you know, good outing by Chili's. And, you know, they are the benefactors of the uh, absolutely abysmal service over at Friday's. So, you know, they, they did pretty good. The guy behind the counter was really, really... Um, friendly and he was multitasking unlike the manager over there at Friday's and you know I am going to drop Friday's in line about this because I don't normally do a lot of that kind of thing where you follow up with a complaint but you know I don't think that they're going to see this video so I really think that they need to know uh, what happened over there at Friday's today. Anyway thank you for watching guys uh, also uh, we're going to uh, reveal right now the burger nominees for burger of the year uh, national, local, and worst burger of the year as well, which could be national or local. I've got some handy dandy notes to let me know uh, what I decided. And of course, it's mostly decided by what rating I gave the burgers throughout the year. Um, three finalists for each. Your national burger of the year finalist, all three of which re received full thumbs up uh, on the rating. Uh, Steak and Shakes Philly Cheesesteak Burger. Uh, also, Hardee's Most American Thick Burger, and the third nominee is Cookout's Huge Steak Burger. So uh, check out the those reviews. I'm going to put the links for those in the comments, uh, or rather in the description section down below, so you can check out those burgers. Also, locally, didn't do as many local burgers, but we got a few done. Uh, one full thumb up and two seven eighths thumbs up are the nominees for this particular uh, award. But two of them come from one place. 29 Diner recently that we reviewed uh, the country fried steak burger that I had and the uh, uh, fried egg and bacon, I'm sorry, burger uh, that Will, Heel Will Mahoney had are in the mix as well as the FDB bourbon burger. Uh, FDB, of course, stands for frozen dairy bar down the street down there on Route 50. Uh, again, you can check out those video reviews in the description down below. Also, the worst burger of the year uh, for 2015. Three nominees for that as well. Uh, Denny's Thick Burger. Or I'm sorry, no, not thick. Denny's Thing Burger, uh, which was their burger with eggs and bacon on it, but it had some kind of thing sauce, and it was really kind of sloppy, and I didn't like the bun, and it wasn't that great. Uh, pizza and Burger Factory, which you saw me review their pizza on Friday for Pizza Night, uh, their burger was just bad. So that's one of the nominees as well, as well as the much ballyhooed and reviewed Halloween Whopper, one of the worst burgers of 2015. Find out next week when I reveal the award winners for these awards, whether they win 
worst burger of the year. All right, guys, you can tell me which one you think is the worst burger down there in uh, the comments down below, as well as on the SAS Facebook group, which you can join by clicking on the link down below in the description. There'll be a link for that as well. Also, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Brandon Reich SAS. Anytime you're on the web, make sure you use hashtag Snack Society to try to get in touch with us and let us know what you're eating, and we'll let you know where we're eating too. And in the meantime, in between time, like, favorite, share, subscribe. You done fucked up, Fridays. Bye-bye.